little rotary rasp and uh, I've used it before and uh, mixed results but let's see what happens see if it'll actually work <laughs> Guess what? It's windy again. We're battling the wind. Um, these are one of the, it's a cup holder, fishing rod holder um, combination. And these are made by Meat Series. Uh, these are plastic ones. Kind of wish I would have bought the metal ones now. <laughs> uh, there's quite a bit of price difference. Um, but they do make these in stainless. Uh, I, I picked the plastic. It was a long time ago, but uh, yeah, I kind of regret it now. But we'll see how they last. So these are the holes it's going in. You can see we have three large holes and two small holes. The problem with the large holes, they don't quite fit. And that's mostly from this gel coat and stuff that's it's actually fairing compound and gel coat and everything else uh, so we're gonna have to clean these edges up these on the other hand fit fine um, these are stainless these are straight so there's no no bend on them the ones we're putting in the back will have a bend on them and that's because the um, when we put the top on this boat if they were straight uh, you wouldn't be able to get the rods in and out so but these are going to be straight they're going to be on the side the reason we're going to use the straight ones is we don't want the rods sticking out from the boat you know if, the, if these rods were all sticking out we have to worry about catching stuff pulling up to the dock things like that so you want them nice and straight on the sides um, so these are good we got two of those to put in um, they do come with a little seal on them already so we got those, but we got to see if we can clean these up. Needs a little bit more. just about there you know when we drilled these out the the hole saw um, was very close to the actual diameter that we needed so that's why these are a little little tighter Okay, there we go and we got to do that a few more times and uh, we're ready to these will have to seal 
and that may fit pretty tight. So these, you can see they, they have a flat bottom. So we'll have to put a little sealant on there, drop these back in there and uh, seal up the screw holes too. We'll have to seal the screw holes in this too because this is gonna be on the top. Water can get in around that screw hole and just wick its way through. So let's fix the other ones. Yeah, they're ready to be screwed. All right, so we're gonna um, lay these things out. Now, what we've decided we're gonna do with these are these have three holes. So we're gonna put it so that the one hole goes to the back and the other two are in the front. The reason we're doing this is just because if we're ever working underneath here, I'd rather have the two screws toward the back because they're gonna protrude just a little tiny bit, I think. Um, so how do we lay these things out we want all the screws to be symmetrical um, so what we did is we went ahead measured across our hole so we got three and a quarter so at one and five eighths we took our square came across, measured right here till we got one and five eighths. And you can see we made a little line there. Okay. Now we can take this, turn this so that we have one hole toward the front, center that line in the hole and that's where these are going to go. So we're going to do these three the same. We'll go ahead and drill our three holes and then um, we're going to use a just a countersink just to make that hole a little bit wider on the top so we don't crack this gel coat. There's one. Now for these other ones, as long as we don't move anything, we can leave it right there. Um, if we get into a, a case where we start to move it, we can start a screw. Alright, so you can see we got our three holes. Now we're just going to get the countersink and, and just hit these three holes real quick.
now you can see using the countersink just a little bit so what we're looking to do is just make it um, so that when the screw goes in and it starts to bite it's not going to chip this up now of course you're not going to see it if it does chip up but uh, just don't want it to chip up so we got three of these on the back and then we can start putting in our angled rod holders Now I'm fortunate that the sides are square. Now on the front seat, we're not as fortunate because it's only the front that's square. The back actually has a little curve and that goes along with the uh, railing that, that's back there. So we're gonna go ahead and make this an inch and five eighths. and five-eighths there's our pencil mark and there we go so we got our pencil mark lined up right dead center and we're ready to start drilling that one now when I talk about chips this is what I'm talking about right here see I got this chip in the gel coat when I was uh, using that power rasp so I just don't want to have more of those and have them move out or get any spider cracks Now we'll do the angles. Okay, for these, it's a little different. But these holes are exactly two inches. <clears throat> Which means 
we're looking for an inch. Let's pull this out. Let's see how measure over one inch. And our line. Now we can drop this in. And we'll do the same thing. That one looks a lot closer. That's it right there. So basically what I did is I came over here keeping this square against the, the back of the seat. Three inches is the outside of this circle. So I just took that three inches, brought it over here, and I made my line just by moving this down. Let's see how we look. So that says that that is where we want to be. Now this one I went ahead and I made three circles. And again, the reason we had to do it this way is just because this hole is so out of round. bits I'm using have the hex head which is nice because they don't roll away that does not makes it a little challenging to keep that countersink close by all the time good off to the next one now on the front seat it's a little bit different because these are straight so they're not on an angle these holes are cut perfectly straight down so these as you can see have a straight edge on it so what we're able to do here is measure from the edge to the beginning of the rod holder and we have an inch and a quarter now we'll keep that one the same and we'll just use our square and hold it against the edge to make it square. So now this is square to the front because the back of the seat is not square. The front of the seat is square. This keeps this square and it keeps the, the first hole at the exact same spot as that one will be. Just wanted to show you something real quick. You may have seen on some of these other ones, where I end up with two lines. Now the reason for those two lines is is because none of these holes are perfectly round. So what we're doing is we're measuring from one side to the other side and we split the difference. Then we take that, in this case it's an inch and, a, uh, inch and five eighths. So we measure from here to the center of our square 
an inch and five eighths and we make a line. Then what we're doing is we're using the back side of the square and we're measuring from here to here an inch and five eighths and making another line. Now what that does is that gives us two lines. So our center is going to be in the middle of those lines. So that's how we found the center of a circle that's not really exactly a circle. Then what we do is we drop this in and we just try to center those two lines in the circle. Now we're exactly where we want it to be. Okay, so we're ready to start installing these rod holders. One of the things we're going to do is we're going to run a, a bead of silicone all around this bottom. And then we'll drop these in and just a little silicone on each screw hole. And we'll see what, what oozes out underneath here and we'll just wipe that off. So we do want to make sure we go around that. You want a little bit to ooze out. I'm in the hole here. That's it right there. Looks like we got just a little bit oozing out all the way around. This is one of the reasons we wanted to make sure that we had this good and waxed beforehand so that we can wipe off any of the silicone easily. Okay, that is the first one. So that is now installed. Next, we'll do some of the chrome ones, then we'll do another one of these, a couple more chrome ones, and another one of these. So we got quite a few to do here on the back. Now if you remember, these don't have the rubber gaskets. 
Um, the straight ones have a rubber gasket which goes on here. So these we're going to try to silicone around each one of these and try to get right here on the edge. Uh, let's see how we can do this without making too much of a mess. gave it a shot. Let's see how they fit. Like just a little bit. Okay, so that one looks pretty good. On to this one. doing here is we're putting just a little bit of silicone in the well that will get picked up by these threads and suck it in and we're trying to prevent any silicone from really getting um, on top of his head okay they're all installed so that's it for the back seat. Now we got to work on the front seat. On these, we've already pre-drilled our holes. Oh boy, there's some, some scratches I could see here. Now these are a little bit different because these have a rubber base on them. So these are going to go in pretty easy, I think. We'll just set the rubber base up. A little bit of silicone on our screw.
that's it. These are sealed by the rubber. Ready to go fishing. Now this one we might, I might just hold off on this because I got some scratches in here that I'm seeing now. That I can probably sand out pretty easily. So we're going to hold off on this one. Now these we have to put a little caulking on the bottom of. that those scratches in we'll set that one in and that's it There's one for the bloopers reel. I uh, went off the edge. It's nice having these seats to work off of, but you have to remember that there's an end to them. <laughs>